Hey, what's up everybody? Dorn Aldana here coming at you with another kick-ass episode from the Art of Mortgage Marketing podcast. And today is Love Day, Valentine's Day. So I thought it would be timely and appropriate to talk about the three reasons, the three reasons why LOs, mortgage professionals, fall out of love with their business and how to get your fire back, how to get your passion back, how to love your life and your business again. And frankly, this is a common plight among many mortgage professionals I speak to on a regular basis. You know, they're burnt out, they're frustrated, they're annoyed with a, a particular part of their business that's sucking the juice and the life out of their business and their experience of being in their business. And then they bring that home to their families. And when they're at work, they're feeling not as excited about their business because they're either bored or it's just the same old thing, Groundhog's Day, same old thing every single day, same old thing every single year. And they're just annoyed with being the chief cook and bottle washer, wearing all the hats, they're sick and tired of the minutia, or they're just tired of spinning their wheels, being in the same spot over and over and over again. They're stressed out, they're frustrated, they're annoyed, they're you know operating in their zone of weakness instead of their zone of strength. Maybe it's a combination of all that combined, but it's a very common plight and it breaks my heart because they start out the business with all kinds of positive intention. They were bright off, they were bright eyed and bushy tailed and fired up and excited about their business. And then something along the way happened where they just lost that fire. They lost that love. And perhaps you're in that place right now. Maybe you've been in the business for a number of years and in the past, You've had experiences that were thrilling and igniting and exciting. You were loving it because you were growing and expanding and you were learning and, you know, you were taking new ground and you're conquering new mountains instead of sliding down old ones. And then somewhere along the way, things shifted. Maybe the market shifted. Maybe the low hanging fruit dried up. Maybe that uh, that boom that you were flourishing in started to dry up and dissipate. Next thing you know, you land flat on your butt and you wonder what happened and you're having a hard time getting yourself back on track and getting yourself back to where you used to be and your best years were behind you. And if indeed that's the case, that's no way to live because we're designed to grow. If we're not growing, we're dying. And so passion and loving life, I think is inextricably linked with growth and expansion and progress and learning and feeling like you're evolving into becoming a better version of yourself. And if you feel that progress, you don't necessarily have to have all your ducks in a row. You don't necessarily have to be, you know, flourishing at the level that you know you're capable of. You just need to feel like you're moving in the right direction. That the sense of direction is more important than current location is a very human experience. As long as we're moving in the right direction, we can feel fulfilled. We can feel that fire. We can feel that sense of satisfaction and fulfillment because we know that we're moving in the right direction. We may not yet be at the right location because we want to continue to grow and expand and build towards something even more beautiful, even more abundant, even more fulfilling. But because we have a trajectory of growth and we're making progress, that's where the juice is. That's where the fire is. So these are three reasons I've seen, been in the game coaching mortgage professionals for the last 15 years, that is usually at the source of why someone loses their fire and loses their love for their business. So the first reason why they fall out of love with their business is stagnation. So in other words, they're in a place of regression and or flatlining. They're in the same spot they were last year or the year before that or the year before that. Maybe they've even slid down the mountain and they're in regression, which is even worse. Now you're sliding backwards. Now you're incurring a financial haircut. Now you're having to tighten up the proverbial budget belt and that sucks because now you got to cram your life and your lifestyle into a smaller and smaller box, right? You got to watch every penny. You got to buy the cheap item on the menu instead of the thing you really want, which is like the steak or the lobster, right? You got to go for the chicken and 
that's not even good chicken. It's dry, nasty chicken, right? So you're settling a lot in life. You're telling your spouse, your significant other, your kids, we can't afford it. We can't afford it. We can't afford it. Or maybe you're just stagnated in a really, quote unquote, comfortable spot. Maybe you're making, quote unquote, better than most money. You know, I'm doing better than most. Uh, most people would dream of the kind of money I'm making, right? So maybe that's one of the ways you soften the problem. It's kind of like the fat guy who says, I'm not fat. I'm just big boned. No, you're freaking fat. <laughs> and until and unless you acknowledge you're fat, you're going to stay stuck where you're at. Well, same thing here where you coddle your comfort zone. You say, you know, I'm doing better than most. I'm making 150K or 200K or 300K a year. But you've been there for five years and you used to make half a million. And you're like that chicken scratching around in the chicken yard with the chickens instead of soaring with the eagles. You're not designed to be a chicken. You're designed to be an eagle. You've got those big wings to soar, not to just have pent up behind you doing nothing while you scratch around with the chickens being unfulfilled and knowing you're capable of so much more. So stagnation in nature is always inextricably linked to toxicity and something that is in the process of rotting. You look at water that's stagnated. What is it doing? It's rotting. It's toxic. You cannot swim in it, right? It's got duck poo. It's nasty. You go in there and you're going to get lumps and bumps and itches and scratches and all a matter of nastiness. So stagnate, stagnation breeds rot. And anytime you start to stagnate in life, doesn't matter how much money you're making, if you're not making progress towards expansion and growth, you're rotting inside. You can sit on your laurels only for so long and then you start to lose your fire. You start to lose your passion. You start to lose the joy of life because it's the same old, same old. There's no new challenge. There's no new adventure. Sure, it might be comfortable or safe, supposedly, at least in perception in the now, but chances are you're headed towards an even deeper level of stagnation or regression, or you're headed towards that precipice where you fall off and you're rudely awakened with the fact that all that complacency is now leading to a crumbling of your foundation. Next thing you know, you've incurred a massive financial haircut. The low hanging fruit has, has dried up. The refi boom is over. Your refis are no longer there to, you know, buffer the blow and all of a sudden your income gets chopped in half. I see this time and time again because where complacency happens is when neglect and compromise happens. Next thing you know, you're drifting instead of driving, you're reactive instead of proactive and you end up sliding backwards and you end up becoming a victim of your own complacency. That's why I say good is always the mortal enemy of great. Because when you do good, you tend to compare yourself with others. You sit on your laurels and you get this sense of entitlement, the entitlement complex, I call it, where now instead of you driving and you having a fire and a, pa a passion for excitement and expansion and contribution and impact and growth, you sit on your laurels and you say, I'm comfortable. And instead of stretching yourself out of your comfort zone every day with pep in your step and sparkle in your eye for bigger, more audacious, more compelling goals, you just say, I want to just keep it like it is. So your goals start to get smaller and smaller and they're conservative goals. In other words, you want to conserve what you have. And it's often operated by fear because you're afraid of having to work more. You're afraid of having to take away from what you already have. So you just want to conserve it. But instead of having an expansion mentality, you have a conservation mentality. And what happens is when you start to tighten your grip on what you have, you lose it, right? It's kind of like the monkey trap. You may have heard of the story of these monkey trappers where they just put a jar with some peanuts and they attach the jar to a fastening system to the tree. So when the monkeys reach in for the peanuts and they grasp around the peanuts with their hand and they try and pull out of the jar, they can't because their hand has now expanded because of the tightening of their fist. And that's how they catch the monkey. 
because they will not let go of the peanuts. They're grasping and trying to keep what they have and therefore they lose their freedom. They ultimately lose the most precious gift they have, their freedom. And many of you have lost your most precious gift, your fire, your passion, your fulfillment, your joy, because you're grasping for your comfort zone. You're grasping for conserving what you've had or what you have. You're grasping for keeping it the same. You're grasping for a sense of entitlement. Well, I've been in the business for so long, so I shouldn't have to go and drum up business anymore. So you drift instead of drive. Stagnation is one of the biggest sources of losing your fire and your love for this business. Don't let that happen to you. If you're not growing, you're dying. The next source of having your fire burn out and losing that love for your business is frustration. And this is where you decide, okay, I want to grow. I want to grow my income. But you're using the same old methods or using methods that worked 5, 10, 15, 20 years ago. And they've hit the point of diminishing returns. They're just not working anymore. So now you get frustrated, right? Because you're banging your head against the wall. You're spinning your wheels and it ain't working. You know, you're throwing yogurt at the fan. It ain't sticking. And so now it starts to play with your head, right? What the heck's wrong with me? Why can't I figure this out? Maybe you see some young punks leaving you in the dust. They just got in the business and they're killing it and crushing it. And you're like, what's up with me? Why can't I figure this out? So it starts playing with your head, right? Now you're starting to feel an erosion of your confidence. You start to lose your mojo. You start to lose your swagger factor. And next thing you know, you're in this cul-de-sac of frustration. And you start to tell yourself stories like, I've tried everything. No, you tried like three things. And those are three things you've tried before for the last five years. And of course they didn't work because if you keep doing what you keep doing, you're gonna keep getting what you've been getting. It's the definition of insanity, right? Trying to do the same thing over and over again, but expecting a different result. And yet we tell ourselves these stories, generalizing, say, you know, I've tried it all. No, you haven't tried it all. You've been doing it the hard way with like three things or four things or five things. And a lot of that stuff is just, you know, common type methods. It's the me too marketing, right? Follow the herd marketing. Oh, you're cold calling realtors every Monday. Okay, me too. You're going to open houses. Okay, me too. Oh, you're going to networking events. Okay, me too. We follow the herd, right? And if you want to get extraordinary results, you can't afford to do what the ordinary do. And yet that's what we do. Then we tell ourselves, oh, I've tried everything when it didn't work out. When really all we're doing is just following the herd. And obviously if you follow the herd and you do what the mediocre does, we're going to get the results of the mediocre, which is obviously mediocre. So frustration is another source of a strangling and a killing of your passion because you can only do frustration so long until that stress and that annoyance and that worry and that aggravation starts to corrode and erode your fire and your passion for your business. And if you don't create a breakthrough relatively soon in that cul-de-sac of frustration, what happens is we start to lower our standards. We start to now, because we have less confidence, less certainty, we start to set lower goals. We start to settle for a less abundant life. And we start to cope by playing this loop in our head. Maybe I've lost it. Maybe I don't have it anymore. Maybe it's time to look at doing something else. And that is death rattle to passion and a love for this business. Just because you're heading east looking for the sunset and it ain't working, it doesn't mean it can't work. It just means you have the wrong strategy, the wrong approach. Because if you're heading east looking for the sunset, we got a problem. That will never work. It doesn't matter how much fire or passion you have. If you're applying the wrong strategy, going in the wrong direction, it doesn't matter how much motivation or inspiration you have, right? You might be whistling in amidst the storm, but if you're heading to your peril and to your death, that whistling is not gonna help you much. So frustration, beware of frustration. It's a good thing because it gives you a creative energy to want to solve the problem. Frustration is a good thing. You just don't wanna stay there, right? Because it gives you creative 
imaginative and uh, defiant resolve energy to fix that problem. But you've got to bring intelligence and effective thinking and effective problem solving to it. Otherwise, eventually you hit that breaking point and you just say, screw it. And you start to settle for a second best life. And we don't want to let that happen to you. Life's too short for that. This is no dress rehearsal, friends. So don't let yourself have your love for the business and your passion for this business be eroded and ultimately killed by that frustration because it will if you let it. We got to get a solution. We got to give you the tools, the support, and the structure to be able to win. That's the key. And the last source or the last reason why so many people fall out of love with their business is because they reach boredom or burnout or maybe a combination thereof. Okay. So it's linked to the other ones, right? It's that cul-de-sac of frustration. It's doing the same old thing, the same old way. It's banging your head against the wall. It's Groundhog's Day. Every day seems like the same day. And it all just starts to become so gray and ordinary and vanilla and blase. Or you're grinding and you're grinding and you're grinding and you're putting in those 50, 60, 70 hour weeks and you're working evenings and weekends and you're toiling and you're sweating and it's blood, sweat and tears and you're not at those magical moments with the family. You're watching that on social media because you're in the office with the office ball and chain and you're just grinding, grinding, grinding to get ahead. But inside, it's killing your love for the business because you know you're made for more than just grinding. I was there. I've been there. Getting up at four in the morning, hustling, 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 and not giving myself a minute to even have a break and just, you know, white knuckling it. And when I'm with the family, I'm thinking about work. And I'm with the when I'm in work, I'm thinking about the family. And I'm feeling guilt and shame that I need to be more attentive to my family when I'm working. So I'm not fully present when I'm working. And then when I'm with my family, I'm not fully present being with my family because I'm thinking about the umpteenth thing I got to do and all the you know things that need to be accomplished and all the things I didn't get accomplished. It's It sucks because you're in this perpetual frustration and this perpetual double-edged sword. And meanwhile, just feeling tired, just feeling tired burnt out and tired. That's no way to live, friends. I've been there. I realized at one point after doing that for quite some time that I was living under this presupposition that God doesn't got me, that if I just surrender my business and my life to God in that respect, that he's not going to you know, cover for me. So but something bad's going to happen. I'm going to go backwards. So it was all undergirded by fear. I had a fear that if I don't white knuckle it and grind it and perpetually pursue it and hustle my ass off, I'm going to go backwards. So I was living in fear because I would not just trust and surrender. And some of you need to get to that place where, yes, you need to be equipped to win. Yes, you need to show up to the gunfight with an Uzi, not a butter knife. We need to get you equipped to win. Let's be real. You need the right structure. You need the right systems. You need the right approach. But in addition to that, we need to also be able to surrender our business and to be able to build a business that sets us free, not enslave us, right? Who wants a business that enslaves us? We're not designed to be enslaved. We're designed to be child children of God who are liberated to a high calling and purpose to make a difference in this world, to be the light in the darkness, to be able to be catalyst of contribution, to be instruments of the divine to make a difference for people, to add value to people's lives. That's why we're here. And if we just continue to grind, 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 we're losing and missing out on the most potently beautiful part of life, which is a life of service, but also a life of surrender. Surrender to our maker, surrender to love, surrender to the things that matter most, which is the things money can't buy, family, relationships, a sense of contentment, a sense of fulfillment, a sense of joy, a sense of peace of mind, a sense of happiness, a sense that we're making a difference, we're having fun, we're growing, we're expanding, and it's a joyous process. We're not 
trying to achieve to be happy. We're happily achieving. And so that's my desire for you, that you don't try to grind, grind, grind to achieve to be happy, but you find a way with fun and flow and fulfillment to happily achieve, to have fun along the way, to enjoy the journey, to have that pep in your step and that sparkle in your eye, and to just feel that love for your business again, to be reignited, to get your fire back to be loving life, the thrill of adventure, the thrill of victory, the thrill of progress. That's the juice of life, my friends. Not burnout, boredom, frustration, and stagnation. That's death rattle to passion. That's death rattle to your fire. And we got to ignite that right white hot fire of burning desire for you to get your fire back. Because without that fire, nothing else really works, right? Without that fire, you're just the walking dead. Life is too short for that. This ain't no dress rehearsal, friends. This is a one-shot deal. Let's make it count. So if you've heard me speaking in this episode and there's something in your heart that's just been triggered, you're like, brother, I feel you. This is exactly what I needed to hear. I've been compromising. I've been neglectful. I've been complacent. I've been drifting. I've been reactive instead of proactive. I've lost my fire. I've lost my passion. I've lost my love for this business. But I need to get it back. I, re- I need to reignite. I need to find my champion self again, my winner self again. I need to have the warrior or the warrior S rise up and to really step into my greatness and to step into my calling and to step into my purpose. And if that is you, if you're listening to my voice right now and you know this is divinely orchestrated for you, because there are no accidents, then I invite you to take advantage of a complimentary breakthrough call. If you want to expand month after month, year after year, enjoy the journey, reignite your passion, and you know you need someone in your corner to take you by the hand and to show you the pathway to progress, to show you the formula for success, to show you your blind spots because when you're you're inside the bottle, it's hard to see the label. When you listen to my voice and you have that knowing that there's something inside of you that is calling out to be unleashed in the world, to make a difference and to fulfill your full potential, I invite you now to take that energy and to strike while the iron is hot to book a complimentary breakthrough call where we get on the phone, you and I are with one of my consultants and we lift up the hood on your business and we look at what's working, what's not working, where you're at now, where you want to be. And if we can help you create that breakthrough and help you go stratospheric and help you kick ass, take names, chew bubble gum, crush it, then by all means, we will show you how to do that with a proven plan. And if not, frankly, I will be the very first person to advise you to pass on our services. Either way though, my goal for you is you leave the call with massive value, massive clarity. Chances are we'll have a very meaningful conversation, like a conversation you haven't had in years, if ever, where another fellow soul, another fellow human being really listens and really cares and really has a heart to make a difference. And if nothing else, we'll have some fun along the way. So if that sounds meaningful and worthwhile to you, go ahead and book a call. Go to mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. Again, that's mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. And we'll book a time on the calendar that works for our schedule and we'll make it happen. So again, marketingcoach.com forward slash apply. All right, guys. So that's the uh, special episode for Valentine's Day. Thanks for hanging with me on this day of love, this day of you know, really getting connected with the most powerful force in the universe, which is love. Having a love for your life, a love for your business, a love for the things that matter most to you, a love for your family. That's what this is about, guys. I want you to tap into that. I want you get to get ignited and excited again about the things that matter most to you. And those are things that money can't buy, relationships, fire and passion for your business, fire and passion for your marriage. If you have a marriage, if you have a significant other, I want you to not just be going through the motions and just be kind of like, you know, Dollsville. I want you to be excited about it. I want you to feel that energy about it. I want you to 
just feel that sense of, uh, man, I am so blessed. I'm so grateful. I'm so thankful. That's what I want you to feel. So I've been messing around with the screen, trying to get the screen to, to work. It's not working. Um, I'm hoping that I can sort this out. One sec. Let, let me just uh, type it in again. So it's uh, mortgage marketing coach.com forward slash apply. Let's see if that works. There we go. Got it to work that time. Admin is not my forte, but that's okay. We dance in our strengths. We do what we do best. We get the best to do all the rest. And we try and minimize our weaknesses. And in this case, admin and handling all the uh, details on the screen is obviously not my forte, but it's all good. We figured it out. Persistence beats resistance, right? All right, guys. Well, I hope you got value from our conversation today. Be blessed. Happy Love Day. Happy Valentine's Day. Now go forth, take massive action, y'all. Take massive action. Bring this message of growth and this message of reigniting your fire and put it to practice in your life. If you need help, book a call. But take massive action because the biggest gap in life is the gap between that which we know and that which we, and that which we do. That's the biggest gap in life. That which we know, that which we do. So bridge that gap by taking massive action and we will bridge the gap between your dreams and your reality and we'll make it happen. All right, y'all. Be blessed. Love you. Thanks for hanging with me. This is Dorn Aldana, Mortgage Marketing Coach, coming at you from MortgageMarketingCoach.com, the Art of Mortgage Marketing Podcast. Be well, be blessed. We'll talk to you soon. Peace.